guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Doctor Who. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 11 of season 1 of Doctor Who. Christopher Eccleston, the ninth Doctor. <laughs> Ah, uh, what is season one? What is series one? Where does it actually start? In the nice little cushy middle where all the deliciousness is being kept. Um, yeah. After the last episode, it was really funny because I was really confident in saying, like, I'll be done with series one. Uh, and then I got sick and my body laughed at me and said, <laughs> you think so? Uh, so, yeah, no. Mm, yep. Did not did not get to finish series one before everyone got to see the doctor dances. Uh, I had plans. Definitely had plans. And then virus um yeah so i'm back a little nasally still but i'm excited because um a couple reasons um with jack harkness um and being uh introduced to him and him being saved at the end i don't know if he is going to join us until the end of the season if he's going to go off on his own but a lot of people have told me that he's in torchwood which i guess is a minor spoiler that that means he makes it out of the series but at the same time I don't know where it's going to go and we can go back in time and I could see him again in, you know, a, a past experience and he's a time agent and, you know, so there's, there's a lot that could actually happen. So I don't, I don't really know, I don't even know what Torchwood is about. So, um, I do know that it's an anagram for Dr. Who. I think that's about it, but I don't know if Torchwood's a place. I don't know if it's a, it could be a bar. They're like, meet me at Torchwood. You know, it could be like a coffee shop, like in Friends and they have like a Gunther in the background. I don't, I don't know. I doubt it. I'm sure it'd be timey, wimey, wimbly, wobbly, whatever somebody has said to me. I don't know. Was that in, not the office, Parks and Rec? It's right here. Community, I think. I think they did like a, a Doctor Who episode. And of course, people who haven't watched Doctor Who but have seen that kind of have an idea about something about Doctor Who because I've had it said to me and I'm like, I don't think that's been said in this series, but apparently it's been said in community. So anyway, um, I'm interested to see kind of like what happens with Jack. We have a time agent. So like, is there a time agency? So there's not just Time Lords and a planet in which there were Time Lords that was destroyed, but there's also an agency that runs time. Is that separate from the Time Lords? Is that separate from the Doctor's planet, whatever, wherever he's from? Um, you know, he got a big win. Everybody lives, Rose. Everybody lives. And that's pretty much not common for him. Like, he's trying to save people because he couldn't save his own planet. So, like, when he gets a win like that, it's huge. It's big. It's exciting. And I'm happy for him. I really am. You know, like, I think that that's, like, the whole, his whole thing. Because, like, if he didn't want to save people, he could just go land somewhere and live out his life if he wanted. You know? And, and try to make it whatever he wanted it to be. But, you know, now he's trying to go from place to place to save people or, you know, learn new things. Um, you know, like, uh, that Daleks were still a thing and that, you know, uh, how Rose could change a Dalek and its way of thinking and it, instead of exterminate, it didn't know what to do, you know? So there's, there's like things that like the doctor's learning along the way that maybe he didn't think about, you know, like kind of like sentient life wanting to take over dead bodies. I know I'm really stuck on that episode, but like, he's just like, yes, it's a way to save this, you know, the, these people, these sentient beings. And then it's not such a great idea uh, in the long run or like what, what their, their plans were after that to like take over the whole world and just, you know, kill bodies and then take over the the dead bodies you know so like like he's learning things along the way about the lives that he's saving and and i i think i think oh man i hope that jack is a reoccurring character i don't think that he's necessarily going to be a companion because he is a time agent so that makes him different but man man do i love jack and i love how everybody else loves jack so like everybody loves jack Ain't no one hate Jack. Everybody loves Jack. Everyone finds him attractive. He's like the Ryan Reynolds of like the Doctor Who universe. Everyone's like, yep. I I would give up my wife. I'd give up my husband. We'd give up each other. It's just let Ryan Reynolds pick 
You know, like I, it, and that's like the Jack Hartness. I think that's John Barrowman, actually. <laughs> He's very attractive. I'm going off the rails here. I think it's the uh, medication that's making it to where I can breathe. Uh, but I'm excited to get into this episode because I know that we're coming to the end of this season, this series. So I know I'm going to have to say goodbye soon to Christopher. Ooh, I just got so emotional. <laughs> Um, because he's my first doctor, so, he, like, I love him, and I don't want to say goodbye, and I want him around for a lot longer, and I feel like, um, as much as I'm excited to get to, like, David Tennant and Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi and, you know, just all the ones that everyone's like, oh, well, the, the, it's always those three that, like, kind of switch between their favorites, and then sometimes people are like, Eccleston's my favorite, and I can see why he's wonderful. He's absolutely wonderful, and I don't want to say goodbye, and I'm getting emotional over somebody I don't know that I have fallen in love with and this series and just how fun and emotional it can be, but also how heartbreaking and dark and horrific you know, him, like, all the all the people coming at him, are you my mommy? Are you my mommy? Go to your room! Those would have been horrible words to die by. <laughs> you know, like, like, well, horrible words to be your last words. And, like, it just, he makes me laugh, and he's absolutely wonderful, and I enjoy everything about this series. So I'm excited to get into this episode, and then I know that, like, the next three I need to kind of watch together. So I'm going to try to make that happen, but I'm really excited to see this one because it's in the middle of like the two part ending and then the Christmas episode. So this one might, might be standalone, uh, but I, I think we're going to see Jack. And you know how much I love Jack. So guys, let's get into it. <laughs> oh, we're going back to Big Ben being smashed. From inside Downing Street. Oh, I'm glad that they're bringing it back because you kind of don't see the repercussions of it. <laughs> the Slovene. Oh my god, it's so bad! The world is in your hands. Mickey! Oh yeah, Harriet Jones! Six months later. Okay, good. We get to see repercussions of like what happened. Hopefully Harriet Jones is the uh, Prime Minister. The design is not safe. It could result in the death of millions. What? I beg of you, stop the project right now before it's too late. What project? Well, Rumbling. Do oh. Me. May! The scale of it. Destruction like the British Isles has never seen before. Slow motion. I didn't know better. I'd almost think that someone wanted this project to go wrong. As though they intended this city should be wiped off the map. Mm-hmm. Crazy. That Don't turn around. You, our esteemed leader. Bye! Oh, God, the Slovene. Oh, I don't know if I'd see John Barrowman. I don't know if we only ever just see, like, the Doctor and the Companions as, like, the... Okay, back to Russell T. Davies' Boomtown. Okay. I just didn't know if, like, they'd be like, and introducing! Da -da 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 -da. Guess not. Oh, where are we? Well, that's a... That's a TARDIS right there. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Oh, hi, Jack. Who the hell are you? Captain Jack Harkness. Whatever you're selling, we're not buying. Get out my way. Oh, beautiful bone structure, Jack. Oh, sweet. Look at these two. How come I never get any of that? Buy me a drink first. It's such hard work. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing in Cardiff? And who the hell is jumping Jack Flash? I mean, Back to Cardiff. Like with big ears up there. Oi! Look in the mirror. But this guy. <laughs> Handsome. Mm -hmm. More like cheesy. Early 21st century slang is cheesy, good or bad. It's bad. I like cheese. You saying I'm not handsome? We just stopped talking. You're both very handsome. The thing is, Cardiff's got this rift running through the middle of the city. The rift was healed back in 1869. Thanks to a girl named Gwen. Interesting. Called the Gelf. They were using the rift as a gateway, but she saved the world. Everything's coming together. Perfect for the TARDIS. I just park it here for a couple of days, right on top of the scar, and open up the engine, soak up the radiation. Like filling her up with petrol, and off we go. Into time! 
and space! Woo. Nice! That old lady staring. Probably wondering what poor people can do inside a small wooden box. <laughs> <laughs> what are you captain of? The innuendo squad. <laughs> The TARDIS is meant to disguise itself wherever it lands. Like, if this was ancient Rome, it'd be a statue on a plinth or something. But I landed in the 1960s, it disguised itself as a police box, oh. and the circuit got stuck. Thank you, everyone, for already telling me all of this. There's no police boxes anymore, so doesn't it get noticed? Ricky, let me tell you something about the human Ricky. Place. You put a mysterious blue box slap bang in the middle of town. What do they do? Walk past it. Now stop your nagging. Let's go and explore. What's the plan? I mean, it's where it's located is the problem. I'm, I'm with Mickey on this one. Right in front of that, like, waterfall thing? Probably not the, the best place for that to be. No photographs. What did I say? Take pictures of the project by all means, but not me, thank you. Mm-hmm. So, She'll be found out. Cardiff Castle will be demolished, allowing the Blythe Droog project to rise up. The words nuclear power station and major population center aren't exactly the happiest of bedfellows. They're using the rift. But are you aware of the curse? Whatever do you mean? What curse? First of all, there was the entire team of the European safety inspectors. But they were French. It's not my fault if Danger Explosives was only written in Welsh. And then there was that accident <gasps> with the Cardiff Heritage Committee. The electrocution of that swimming pool was put down to natural wear and tear. Jesus. And then just recently, Mr. Cleaver, the government's nuclear advisor, slipped on an icy patch. He was decapitated. What a series of unfortunate events. It almost seems linked. Who's been doing our homework? That's my job. Uh huh. Think... You're gonna die, Kathy, Kathy Salt. Salt. I think you and I should have a word in private. Zip! Cleaver was saying that the whole project could go up. Worse than Chernobyl. Run. Run. Are you alright? You sound a bit sore throat. <coughs> oh my god. We're getting married next month. And he says if I cause a fuss, I could lose my job. Just when we need the money. So there's more people she's gonna have to kill. It's really just to stop my mother from nagging, but the baby sort of clinched it, I suppose. Oh yeah, Go, calm oh, down there. Child. Margaret cares? Is there a Mr. Blaine? Not anymore. I'm all on my own. I had quite a sizable family once upon a time. Oh my god, is this gonna make me sad for the Sladine? Thanks for talking. Thank you. Did that just save the people of Cardiff? Oh my god, do I feel bad? <laughs> so I turn to him and I say, I knew we should have turned left. <laughs> That's my line! <laughs> I don't Look at them all getting along! <laughs> No, I just oh, he saw her. Right for the ship, space lanes. I mean, I was shaken. It was unbelievable. I'm, I'm breaking me out. Did that, that old guy's just gonna sit there and take that? And I was having such a nice day. Yeah. Well, the team is on the job with Mickey in tow. I mean, he was very useful before with the Slovene, so cool. Mr. Target is the last surviving member of the Sladeen family, a criminal sect from the planet Rexacorical Falpatorius, masquerading as a human being zipped inside a skin suit. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Assume a basic 5756 strategy covering all available exits on the ground floor. Doctor, you go face to face. That'll designate exit one. I'll cover exit two. Excuse me. I Mr. love Challenger. him. Sorry. Him. Waiting orders, sir. <laughs> right. Here's the plan. Do what he said. Like you said, nice plan. Anything else? <laughs> so, ready? Ready? Ready. Check. See you in hell. See you in hell? What? Poor Mickey! Oh, good luck, Mickey. It's funny how I couldn't stand Mickey, you know? I'm like, oh, Mickey! Just go in there and tell her the doctor would like to see her. The doctor who? Just the doctor. Tell her exactly Exactly. That. 
the Doctor. Oh my gosh. I love that it's May. I, I, I mean, I'm happy she's the one that made it. Yeah. She's up to eyes and paperwork. Perhaps if we could make an appointment for next week. Nope. She's climbing out the window, isn't she? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> oh! Oh, nice, Jack! Athlete. Oh, Mickey. Oh, kiddo. <laughs> Get! How is your foot in a bucket? Oh, my goodness. What is she doing? What does the combining of the jewelry do? Oh, come on. Anybody could have caught up with her. No, come on. Let's go. Well, I mean, what is this? The doctor's very good at teleport. Well, shit. Hi! <laughs> You're gonna have to have a chat, lady. Can he take her back to her home world? Why can't you leave me alone? What did I ever do to you? You tried to kill me and destroy this entire planet. Just that. Apart from that. Apart from that, you know, that's history. Oh. Fantastic. Is that a tribophysical waveform microkinetic extrapolator? Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. It's a surfboard. A pan-dimensional surfboard, yeah. Oh. If it would have worked, I'd have surfed away from this dead end. Don't Without you meddling kids. You'd blow up a whole planet just to get a lift. Like stepping on an anthill. We have a TARDIS. We can help you. Fly through. What's it mean? Bad wolf. Oh, there we go again. I've, I've there we go again. Bad wolf. Yeah. I've heard that lots of times. Same. Everywhere we go. Two words. Following us. Yep. Bad wolf. What does it mean? Who say? Nah, just a coincidence. Like hearing a word on the radio, then hearing it all day. Never mind. Things to do. It's not an earworm. It's important. Oh, my God. Raxacorico Fallopatorius. Raxacorico Fallopatorius. Fallopatorius. That's it! Raxacorico Fallopatorius. They have the death penalty. Oh, she's in trouble. According to the statutes of government, the moment I return, I am to be executed. Mm, what do you make of I that, think, Doctor? I think that's a you problem. Take me home and you take me to my death. Well, you were going to kill not everybody on Earth! There you go, not my problem. I still feel bad. We've got a prisoner. The police box is really a police box. <gasps> You're not just police. Look at that! Since you're taking me to my death, that makes you my executioners. No, it makes them transport. Each and every one of you. Maybe. You deserve it. There we go. You're very quick to say so. You tried to kill a whole planet! You're quick to soak your hands in my blood. Which makes you better than me how, exactly? Not better! Who said better? No one said better. Long night ahead. Oh, we need to put her somewhere where she can't meddle. Right, Doc? You see it. Let's see who can look me in the eye. Are you not guilty of your crimes? Where's Jack? I bet Jack would be just icy blue. Yeah. Death penalty for you. On your planet. <laughs> I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood. I've been thinking, you know, we could have a pizza or something. Just you and me. That'd be nice. And I mean, if the TARDIS can't leave until morning, we could... Stay the night with each other? Go to a hotel, spend the night. I, I mean, if you want to, I, I've got some money. And do you have to go and tell him? It's none of his business. True. I don't I don't get the draw and attraction for Mickey, but 
If that's what makes Rose happy, great. There's a little restaurant just round the bay. It became quite a favorite of mine. She's gonna try to get away. A last meal. Don't I have, right? Oh, like she's not gonna try to escape. Except exactly. I can never escape the doctor, so where's the danger? I wonder if you could do it. To sit with the creature you're about to kill and take supper. He's not killing you. He's taking you home for you to face consequences. If you slip away just for one second, they'll be in danger. Except I've got these. Oh, what, what are these? Wear one. If she moves more than 10 feet away, <laughs> she gets stabbed by 10,000 volts. Ten, I don't know. 10,000 seems a lot, right? I mean, you ever put a 9 volt battery on your tongue? <laughs> it's like 10,000? Oh. I mean, they're not killing her, though. Like, taking her home to face the consequences of her crimes? Like, that's not being an executioner. That's actually being, like, a good, I don't know, warrant officer? Or, I don't know. Hey, Jack. What's your name? Blonde. Blonde? I am Blonde Phil Fudge Passamia de Slovene. I thought she was going to be Blonde. James Blonde. Next to the one with the light on. Two bedrooms, bayside view. I was rather content. <laughs> Suppose not. <laughs> Tell me then, Doctor, what do you know of our species? Did I'd like you know, to know more. For example, a female Raxacora cephalopatorin can manufacture a poison dart within her own finger. Yes, I did. Just checking. <laughs> and one more thing. Uh huh. Between you and me. As a final resort, the excess poison can be exhaled through the lungs. <laughs> 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 Nice try, blonde. <laughs> we walk underneath these waves, a hundred feet tall and made of ice. I'm going out with Trisha Delaney. Oh, he's moved on. You know what? I don't blame him. Well, she's nice. She's a bit big. She lost weight. What does it matter if she's big? Jeez, Rose. There's been some things in this show, like... That they say that has not aged very well. I can't even go out with a stupid girl from a shop because you pick up the phone and I come running. Just break up. Is that what I am, Rose? Stand by. Just break up. Am I just supposed to sit here for the rest of my life waiting for you because I will? Nope. No. So oh, that's pathetic. Eesh. Break up. Move on. There was this girl just today. The bloodlust rising, just the family had taught me I was going to kill her without a thought. And then I stopped. She's walking around the city because I can change. I did change. Mm -hmm. I know I can't prove it. I believe you. It doesn't mean anything. Every now and then a little victim spared because she smiled, because they begged. Yeah. And that's how you live with yourself. Because once in a while, on a whim, if the wind's in the right direction, you happen to be kind. Only a killer would know that. Mm. Is that right? You're absolutely right. Sometimes you let one go. So he's supposed to let you go and do what? Great acting, though. Great acting. Can you hear that? I'm begging for my life. Shush. Yikes! Oh my god, what's happening? Is it the rift? Oh, Rose took off. It's him again, isn't it? It's the doctor! It's always the doctor! It's always gonna be a doctor, it's never me! You know what? I feel bad for Mickey. But at the same time, bro, move on. She's not the only girl in Cardiff. I don't think you're running away. Oh, I'm sticking with you. <laughs> it's very smart. That's probably the safest place to be at this point. Oh wow! It's the rift. The rift's open. And on top of the TARDIS? 
What did Jack do? Did he, like, connect something that maybe he shouldn't have? What the hell are you doing? It's the rip. Time and space are ripping apart. How do we stop the it? The whole city's gonna disappear. Stop. I don't... Now, the, the episode name being Boomtown? Not happy about that. Hey, go, 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 go. Rose! The people that stand around and watch shit. Just go! Oh! Please don't fall into a hole. It's funny. I'm like, Mickey, bad, but I'm like, like, definitely not Rose. What's happening? Oh, just look on me! Oh, boy. One wrong move and she snaps like a promise. I might have known. Yep. You, fly boy, put the extrapolator at my feet. Can we let go of Rose, please? If it's gonna convulse, you'll destroy the whole planet. And you with it. Oh. Yep, send her to her death. Right to Take her right on back. The crest of the I feel like the doctor might have already thought of this. Oh god, we're not gonna see her on a surfboard, are we? It's not just any old power source. It's the TARDIS. My TARDIS. The best ship in the universe. It'll make wonderful scrap. What's that like? The heart of the TARDIS. Oh wow. This ship's alive. You've opened its soul. I love me a ship that's alive. I thought it was the Gelf. It's better. Bye. Thank you. I don't know what just happened. Oh. <laughs> Here she is. Oh god. She's an egg. Regress to her childhood. She can start again. Live a life from scratch. They can take her we back take to her, her planet. Give her to a different family, tell them to bring her up properly. She might be alright. Or she might <gasps> be worse. That's her choice. She's an egg. She's an egg. She's an egg. When 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 do we decide to give up on having a relationship with Mickey? Because obviously she wants this life with the doctor and the TARDIS. That's a choice. How's Mickey? He's okay, he's gone. Do you want to go and find him? We'll wait. No need. He deserves better. Off we go then. I don't know about better, but he just deserves different. We'll just stop by and pop her in the hatchery. Margaret the Slovene can live her life again. A second chance. Interesting. That'd be nice. Mickey is not the end all be all, girl. You're in your 20s. Like, there's there's so many places that you could go. Okay. Stop at you. Okay. All right. I didn't expect to see the Slovene again. Um, but it's funny. I, I, I could learn her actual name. But May from Ted Lasso. Um, great actress. Great actress. This was a uh, fun, funny uh, interesting in the way where I'm like, like, they're not, they're not executing you, taking you back to your home world, even though, like, you will be executed by the people that are charging you with a crime, that doesn't make them your executioners. I mean, definitely, it does make it to where they're sending you to your execution, but that's, that's a you problem. That really is a you problem. Um, so they are going to take back Margaret's egg to Rexacora Cofalatorius. Falavictorius. Rex Rexacora Cofalvictorius. Rexacora Calif <laughs> Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Um, anyway. <laughs> <coughs> um, okay. I didn't expect to see the Slovene, Margaret, in the capacity, but her still just wanting to, like, destroy Earth. And, like, you know, the doctor's right. There's always one. 
There's one that gets away. There's one that like, you know, uh, has an effect on you, has an effect on your heart or like, you know, uh, and, you know, just because a serial killer didn't decide to, you know, not kill everybody that crossed their paths doesn't make mean that like they're changing. It just means that they didn't kill a person. Good for you. That's what you should probably try to not do is not kill people. I mean, you know, like, bravo. Um, I do like that we kind of like, I, I thought when the ship opened, I was like, is it the Gelf? Like, 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 like I, I was so confused. But knowing that the TARDIS is alive, it has a soul that was the heart of the TARDIS. And that it, it kind of read Margaret and was like, how do we give her a second chance? Because the doctor very much like in in his way of doing things is to not necessarily give people a second chance, but because his species doesn't get a second chance, you know, he wants to save people. So I think, you know, the TARDIS knows consciously that the doctor wants to save people and he doesn't know any other way of saving her. And the TARDIS almost like solves the problem for him. And Everybody knows I love an alive ship. Um, well, kinda. Day stars and uh, 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 raptors are not raptors. Oh my gosh, I've already forgotten the live ships in Battlestar Galactica. I feel like I have to like wait until I can think of it. Oh, I can't think of it. Anyway. But being introduced to a ship that has an organic body to it and then being introduced to a ship that is actually alive and is a species in Farscape and then being introduced to the TARDIS that has a heart and a soul. <laughs> uh, Y'all know how to make me feel things. Y'all know, know how to make me feel things. I am feeling lots of things. And it's so funny. I have a picture of Jack up on my computer right now. And it just says, next stop, Rexa Coracofalvatorius. <laughs> so I'm like, hi. Um, it was nice to have Jack. There wasn't an overwhelming amount of him, but there was a good amount of him. It was just the right amount. I love when he comes up with a plan and he's like, you, you get door one, you get door two, you get door three, I'll take door four, let's lock it in. And he's like, hey, who do you think's in charge here? And Jack's just like, waiting for orders, sir. And then the doctor's just like, sounds good to me. <laughs> I love it. I love how they work together. I love how they play off of each other. There was even a little bit of flirting with Jack and the doctor. Um, you know, um, but I do think Mickey does need to move on with his life. He's just going to get bitter and angry with Rose for constantly choosing not only the doctor, but the TARDIS, like, like listen to all of her adventures and the places that she's seen and where she's gone. And like, that's like something that like lights her up inside. It's something that like makes her feel alive and that she's enjoying and that she's loving. And I think Rose also needs to let Mickey go. It's not just Mickey holding on. It's Rose kind of not feeling the passage of time that Mickey is and like she hasn't had really the time to fall out of love or to be dissuaded from you know wanting to interfere with Mickey's life any further I shouldn't see her mom at all it would have been nice to see Jackie which is odd because uh, Jackie wasn't my favorite character for I mean she, she she will not be my favorite character at the end of this series at all but like you know I mean I'm like I want Rose to spend time with her mom when she can I think that would be nice but here we are. Um, really interesting to bring Mickey in just to kind of be part of the whole Slaline storyline. And then she's like, I want to see you. But I feel like it was really necessary to kind of show like the wear that it's putting on him and how hard it is for him to have Rose, you know, come and go. And they can't move on with his life because he doesn't really know where she stands. And because time passes differently for her being in the TARDIS, you know, it's, it's not as extreme for her. And then she's going on all these adventures and seeing all these things and Mickey isn't, you know, and I feel like if you're choosing that, then you need to let somebody go. And if you're meant to be, you'll come back together. Like that, that, that'll be the thing that like, you know, when all of your adventures are said and done and, you know, you're, you're ready to settle down and, and you love somebody and, you know, they're available and they haven't, um, you know, started a whole new life and, or maybe they did, maybe like they see each other in 10 years and, you know, he's got like a, a kid or something and his wife died and now Rose is back and they could be together. I don't know. 
But I do know that, like, if she's choosing to travel with the doctor, she needs to let Mickey go and she needs to let Mickey know that, hey, it's okay to move on. I understand. I don't think she does. I think she's really hurt that he had moved on and that he was seeing somebody. And I think he should be seeing somebody. I don't think that you should um, let your life stop, especially when you don't know what direction it's going to head in. A hundred percent, I feel for Mickey. I do like the comedy that we had in the diner between the doctor and Margaret and, you know, her like just being like, oh, I'm going to poison this. And I'm just being like, knew that was coming. Oh, my finger. He's like, knew that was coming. And she's like, my breath. Knew that was coming. Like, he's like, oh, I don't really know that much about Slovene. I feel like he does. I feel like he does. Uh, What a great episode. And I learned something about the TARDIS. Like, I already knew about the police boxes back in time because pretty much after the first episode everyone's just like this is what a police box is so it kind of already explained what he was talking about but then the chameleon circuit i think he doesn't want to fix it because he likes that it's a police box and he thinks that it's something that you can just ignore yeah for probably like a good you know 40 year period on earth but any other alien planet they're gonna be like what the hell is that and bad wolf was mentioned yet again and i don't know what bad wolf means and he's just like ah, it's just a coincidence no it's important i want to know what bad wolf means don't tell me i'm gonna watch it eventually I'll, I'll find out i don't i think there's an episode that might actually be titled bad wolf i'm not sure um, it doesn't say what the next episode is. Oh, am I going to spoil it for myself? Bad Wolf is the next one. Yeah. Can't wait then. <laughs> Interested to see what the hell that means and why it comes up every episode. Actually, I don't think it came up in The Empty Child or The Doctor Dances. I think that those were separate ones, separate from the rest of the story Unless it had been mentioned and I didn't see it. But I've been trying to keep an eye out for it ever since it was written on the TARDIS. And I missed the one when they were on the space station with Adam. So. Hit my desk. I don't know what else to do. But if you want to watch the following reaction to this episode, it will be available on my Patreon and up to two episodes early. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Ooh-wee. If, if, you, were, if you were Mickey, I understand being upset. And I would want a firm break off because he can't move on without her. Do you guys feel that way as well Is that they should just part ways? And that doesn't mean that they can't be friends. It doesn't mean that, you know, there's no chance in the future that something can happen. But like right now, they both need to just go live their lives and just experience life. He needs to experience other girls. Uh, she needs to experience other worlds because that is what literally lights her up inside. Um, did you know that the TARDIS, like, is the TARDIS alive in the previous series um, in Old Who or Original Who? Are we, what are we calling it? Original Who? Uh, was the TARDIS considered alive? Did it have a heart? Did it have a soul? Was that just kind of introduced in this episode? Because um, I love the idea of the TARDIS actually being a living being. In the sense that, like, it has a consciousness that it, like, thinks... I mean, obviously, we see it think for itself because it just takes the doctor wherever he, wherever it damn well pleases most of the time. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm loving that aspect of the TARDIS. That just, like, made my heart grow for the TARDIS. I absolutely love that. But, guys, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I don't know if I've already said that. I'm kind of up in my, my brain about just the TARDIS being alive. And I'm so happy and... It was nice to have Jack, and it was interesting to have the Slovene be mentioned again. Um, I don't love the Slovene, but it was really nice to see uh, What's-Her-Face from Ted Lasso again. I love May. I love May. It's good to see her again. And, you know, maybe we'll see her again in the future. No, we won't. We won't, because that skin is now gone. Nope. She's gone. She's gone. But Blonde might be a Slothene we see in the future at some point. But I don't think we're going to get to go to Rex Calicora for a victorious... I don't even know if I said that right. Um, I would like to have seen that planet. I feel robbed. I feel robbed. Unless it starts in the next episode and that has something to do with Bad Wolf. But she didn't know what Bad Wolf meant in Welsh or like she just liked the name or whatever. So it's not like... It's not like it was something that, you know, was on her planet. So I don't think that that's where we're going to start. But guys, come back here for the next episode. God, I love this show. God, I love this doctor. I am so sad. How many more episodes do I have? I have the last two that I will be watching together. Oh. I read the episode title after Bad Wolf. That was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to savor the flavor for as long as I can because I absolutely love Christopher Eccleston and I want as much of him as possible and I want to like just, if I were a TARDIS, open up my heart and soul, just suck him in and keep him there forever. Okay, guys, that was really weird and I made it weird, so I'm going to go. Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs>